But Bob is so proud of his new wipers. I call it slapping. Well, sometimes you just have to go places that a lot of people don't think you should go. But I'm not scared. Nope. I can go in here. I will handle it. Let's go do this. Oh heck, I forgot something. Okay, I think that'll do it. There we go. Now I'm set to go into Harbor Freight. It looked like dawn. All right, let's go. Oh, that was interesting. Hello, Rock Three. How you doing there? Let's see if I can get out here. Open up, hurry, hurry, hurry. The cop saw me. Ah, oh, this is what I came after. I got to make something for the grinder and I was sitting there thinking you know I don't remember where my old one was and man I called everywhere around Northern Tool, Bass Tool, seeing the carbide tools no one had anything but Harbor Freight did but I have my method of getting in there so it works now Let's go back to the shop. Hi guys, welcome back. And kind of a wall with the, the hurricane hitting Houston and just been busier than a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. But I got a little time tonight and I thought I wanted to show you something. I'm getting ready to put this completely back together. And I'm working on the grinder, getting it ready to grind some of the parts and I'm going to show you a little bit about what I need to do. I also want to show you what I think is really stupid when people do things. I'll get to that in a minute. This is the uh, blocking rod for the knee. It goes in down here, you know, doing all the bondo and painting I did on the thing. I had to take a little chamfer tool and clean out that hole a little bit. I ran a uh, reamer down through it so it would be nice and easy and smooth. This is one of those things that you don't ever really get to oil. So right before I put it together at the very end, this goes all the way back and locks the knee in. I'm going to put a little bit of grease right in here. So it kind of coat the inside of that casting where it won't get moisture and rust. I tell you, I fight rust all the time here. And no matter what I do, it seems that like it always wins. This part of the shop's air conditioned and heating so it's not as bad but boy some of it is. There we go. That went all the way back in there. And that's where it lives. Maybe I should show you what it actually is before we go too far. This works on the cam principle. You can see back here it's basically around, and then they've taken and kind of ground a cam into it. And then they've got this little relief in here so that a, a, a dog point set screw can go in, and that keeps it from pulling out of the shaft. And basically this goes up. There's another little small part in there shape on an angle that presses up against the gib or the D 
gib on that side and tightens it all down. Now this one's a newer model. It also has two other locks back there. I'm going to go see Don and work at a shop today. But things change all the time around here. I had another gate. I had to go to Columbus, Texas. I've had the new truck two days and I've already got 500 miles on it. Wouldn't take me long. Well, that goes in like this. In a minute, I'll show you what I'm going to do over there. But one of the things I want to show you first was this. These are chromed ways. And the chrome is much, 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 much harder than the cast iron. So I've done everything I can to not touch these if I don't have to. And I'm going to have to on the saddle. But on this, I got to measuring it. And even though it's not the prettiest in the world, it's still really close. And it doesn't, in my mind, take away the need to, re oh, excuse me, it doesn't, in my mind, mean I need to redo anything on them because they're that close and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to get the little camera. you ever noticed today how people that do videos, and especially professionals, about every three seconds they change the screen. Boom, 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 boom. It's like no one has any patience anymore. Ha! Where's my camera? Speaking of patience, A couple of videos ago, I took one that I didn't talk. And people didn't like that either. I give up, guys. I'm going to do them the way I want to do them. Appreciate you watching, though. But most people don't watch very well. Now, I try to put a little bit of learning in with this stuff. And I asked Don three questions about that silent video. And I missed all three of them. I said, what did you think about my pants falling off? He goes, when did that happen? Well, they did. And I've been losing a lot of weight. And I left it in just to see how many people noticed. Then he said, well, you didn't talk in it. And I said, I did so. There was some voice in that. And he missed that completely too. Then the last one was, I said, what did you think about my bolts being too long? And he said, what bolts being too long? Huh. These are the bolts that held the turret onto the, the column originally. Now I've added a, a four inch riser to this one up here. And that meant that the bolts were gonna be four inches too short. Well, instead of spending a lot of money on bolts or making some, I found these at a bolt shop. These are grade A bolts. The only difference is they got a little bit thinner head on them, which if that bothers me, I could fix later. But I mismeasured. I figured I'd just add four. Well, these are too short of a thread. So I'm out there threading them all up about another inch so they'll suck down on top of that uh, turret. He missed that. How many of you guys saw it? Not many, I think. All kind of Easter eggs in videos. Horse. I like to watch the whole thing. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. Let's see if you can see here. This way has flaking on it. And if you look down, let's get this out of the way. If you look down, 
you can still see the flaking all the way down. Well, this flaking is only a couple tenths thick. Now, I'll tell you something else. It's purely decorational. And something even worse, it's damaging to your machine. So, right in here, it's a couple tenths thinner than up here. And on this machine, I'm not going to worry about a couple tenths. The benefits of the chrome outweigh that little bit of a wear. When you flake a surface like this, you're hurting your machine. Because dust, medical particles, grit falls down and lays on top of a horizontal surface. And these are exposed sometimes as it moves back and forth. You know, the saddle could be way back here and this will all be exposed to dust. And more importantly, harmful grit. Well, that grit gets in these little oil pockets, is what I call them, and gets carried underneath your way wipers. Why? They're not needed. It's just decoration. It's what a lot of people that quote, quote, rebuild machines, they'll go in here and flake these dang things to make it look like they did something when they didn't do a damn thing. I don't like that because that catches dirt and in a minute I'll show you what happens to the other part of this because of these. Anyway, going back over here on this side of the machine. Did you see in the other video where this fell on the ground? Hmm. Now over here on this side, now this is a newer model. This has three table lo or knee locks to the column. It's got one up here, one down here. These are threaded holes, and your handle screws into them. And back in behind here is a cylinder that's square on one end and 40 degrees on the other, so that it goes up underneath and pushes against the back of this dovetail. There's a large one in here that that cam on the, the, the handle lock turns against. And these just screw in like this. So you got, and I'm not going to go too far because I don't have the gib in yet. That's coming. And this one cleaned up the holes. I found out that the new handles I bought they're not treated in any way. One of them started to rust. So I'm back to square one on what to do about that. Now, that rod I just put in, it's held in place by two screws. And they're different. One's just a plain old That's a dog point. See how it's not threaded all the way to the end? That recess will go into the recess on the shaft. So it goes in first. You go in there and... That's tight there. Now, if you tighten it too much, the shaft... So I got it right there where the shaft, it, that's good right there. And just in the shaft as a feel it. And then you put this one in to lock it. And if you're taking one of these things apart, remember there's a lot of times people put these kind of arrangements on machines to lock things down. So you think you've got one out, there may be another one under there. Okay, that locked that other in place and when I did it it made it too tight to turn this so I need to back off of it
now I can turn that. Not very well. So I'm going to put this in there to see if I can make sure. Yeah. Yeah, that turns. You all aren't even watching. See how it's turning pretty easy? That'd be good. Eyes up here again, guys. Eyes up here. Now you're wibbly wobbly. What's wrong with y'all? Okay, so now I've got everything in here. I can feel that rod when you stick your finger in there. And it's covered with a new cap that just goes in. I figure it ought to look nice. And there we go. So I'm now ready to put the rest of this on. But first I want to get the Gibbs in. And that brings me to another point. Go over there and look at it. Now this part of the video may be a little disjointed. My camera ate the dead gum file. I hate it when that happens. So I'm reshooting it. I can assure you that the one that it ate was ten times better than this one's going to be, but you just have to trust me on that. Now this is the saddle for the bridge port. I've got it over here on my granite surface plate. And I'm going to show you some things that is basically the result of wear and trash on these, these ways. This is the way that rides on top of the knee. This surface here is always, this is upside down. It's always pressing down on that knee and the table rides on the other side. These are oiling ports, and the oil is pumped in and it runs down this channel and is spread throughout the way here. So as this rides on top of the way, all this oil is distributed onto the, the knee way. And when you see all of this stuff right in here, see a line right there there's a ridge this is higher than this is same thing here well that's pretty flush right there it's a little bit higher same way on the other side this is perfectly flush i cannot feel anything there and then this is just a tiny bit higher so of all four of them this is the highest this little space right here was done on purpose you relieve this area so that it doesn't touch. And you'll rely on this pad, this pad, this pad, and this pad. Otherwise, you have so much surface area that stick slip can be a factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the, the, the grinder and grind these two surfaces so they're coplanar. And then I will come back in and cut this section out again. So, being lower, also more oil pumps up and through here. And it gets wiped off by this little section here a little bit, but it's added back in. Now this section never ever sees the light of day, if you will. It's always covered. The rest of the knee way is exposed, and that's why I don't like to see flaking down there because grit just gets in there and sits. You know, think how many chips that poor machine has to make in its life, and little small tiny particles can get into those flakes. This is where it really needs to get its oil. And if you can see. Those little flakes and everything get drug up underneath here. It's more obvious on the other side. Let me turn it over. Things get heavier and heavier.
Now this is the way it sits on the machine. The, the knee is here. The table of the bridge port rides up here. This section never sees the light of day. The underside of the table is exposed, but it's hanging upside down so grit and stuff doesn't get in the flaking on it. They flaked this sucker. In fact, they flaked everything on this. This is chrome. You can see how shiny it is. Look at this pattern here. Out near the, the end, it's worn away. Much more than back here. And it's the same thing over here. This little section here is worn away. Over here, it's even worse. And here, too. Dirt and stuff get embedded in the wipers. So change your wipers regularly. I Every couple of years, every year, they're cheap. And they'll help keep dirt and junk from getting underneath here. And just acting like a big Brillo pad. This one has the same relief here. This one isn't wore down as much. But it's getting close. So once I do this other side, I will take and flip it around. And I'll grind this side off to where it's all coplanar. And then I'll put this relief in. You got to have this relief. You don't want the thing to be solid all the way. It's just too much contact area. I just realized I got to paint this thing too. Look what Don's got me into. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. And we'll go on and I'll show you the Gibbs for this machine and what we're going to have to do with it. Now these are the three Gibbs for the machine. This one is for the saddle crossfeed. This one is for this way. For the table, uh, and this one is for the knee. Now, get the little camera. Give you a close up. You can see this one's chromed. This one isn't, and this one isn't. This is the back side little hole goes through there and distributes oil up against the dovetail from here. Same way on these. Got different amounts of oil. That one's got two holes. This has got one. This has got one way to heck down there. The reason this one has one way up there is because of gravity. This is the top of the gib and sits on the very top of the knee. And so any oil that comes through that hole goes all the way down. This one, oil that comes up, it just stays in that area. And this one, basically the same thing, but it's such a short one, they just can get away with one. These are all flaked, which is good. They don't have the same exposure to metal that the other ways do. So I don't mind flaking these at all. You look here, this one has a ridge right out there. This one also has a ridge there. And basically that's because the way that this rides up against the dovetail doesn't extend all the way over into that uh, way dovetail joint. It stops right here. So all of this area doesn't touch anything. So as it wears, it wears this part, and because it's not touching, this just stays like it normally is. Same with here. And this one to some extent. Now, I'm going to check these ways and see what's going on with 
Now this is the, the cross feed. You see that little ridge again. And you'll notice that there's wear here, hardly any here, and a little bit up here. Now this one, you can see the flaking here, no flaking here, flaking, a little bit of flaking, and a little bit of flaking. This one wasn't touching in this area. Now this one has pretty much the same pattern. You can see there's a little bit of flaking right there, but a lot of wear there and a lot of wear there. Now, I'm going to check these ways and see what's going on with them. Now, the first thing I do is I stone them. Take a little stone and pull them off over here. And this gets any burr off of them. And listen, you can hear. There's a little burr, it, 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 it gets a better noise or bigger noise. Then use your hand to clean it off. Your hand can feel things that if you use a rag, it never, you can't feel it. So now that one's pretty good, cleaned up. Wipe your table off so you don't put trash under it. Now chrome's harder. And that's the beauty of a chromed way. They last a lot longer with no wear. Don't drop these. You'll have a bad day if you do. Of course, these are a little special. You can buy these things from H&W. Then you just scrape it to fit and you're okay. Things like the planer that Don has, he's got a broken way or a gib and we're having to make one. It's not that difficult, but it's another pain in the butt. Now this surface on the way doesn't move against another piece of metal. This actually hangs in and bolts to the, the knee itself and travels with the knee all the time. This is the only surface that actually moves against a metal. That's the one we're most concerned about. Okay, I'm going to turn this little camera on and we'll inspect these dudes. These need to be flat and straight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it by tapping on it on a good surface. Can you hear that? It feels really solid. Maybe a little slap right there. It's really solid there. You can you can hear the difference. That's thinner right there. And if you look, you'll see that there's more wear right there than anywhere. Let's try this one. That feels really solid too. That means it's not bent or straight. Even if you look, you can see that there's 
a little bit of wear here where the flaking's gone, but there's flaking, flaking, and then flaking all down this edge. So that's a good gib. Hear that? call it slapping the underside of this is not touching there hear it now this is the knee gib and it's probably the least critical of all the gibs on this machine because basically, once you set it on a bridge port, most of your down feed, most of the time, is from the quill. Well, that's the end of showing you how I check things like this. Uh, the next part is going to be putting them on the grinder and getting them ready, and then we'll, we'll scrape them. But the rest of this video is going to be about Bob. Bob's got some new wipers shows changing them and why I did so. But Bob is so proud of his new wipers. Couldn't find them from Hardigen. I mean, Bob's maker. Excuse me. Anyway, let's carry on. Had to take a little break. It got hot in here. Cooled it off. Lucky for you all, this is going to be a short video. Lucky for me. Now, Bob has a set of ways, too. They don't look like a regular way on a lathe or, or, or the, the bridge port. The Hardigens have one big flat way. They ride on this and here's the dovetail on each side to keep it from going this way. They have way wipers too. And they suffer the same thing with junk and metal and stuff getting on this can be drug up underneath and you don't that's not good that's why you have a way wiper out here to keep that from happening because that's where the first bit of wear starts now Hardigen makes the way wipers for this and I couldn't get any from them I've been trying for two years it always says out of stock there's little black marks right here or where Bob set for a while when his previous owner died, and they're stained. But I can't feel anything, and I'm not going to mess with them. They're going to be okay. But I am going to change the way wipers, and luckily I found a man on eBay that is 3D printing these out of some rubber that he says is really good, and it's better than nothing. So we'll give them a shot. These are like fifty dollars for one and Hardigen wanted like hundred and fifty dollars for one so hopefully they'll work it's all I've got now they basically just bolt on now the beast the 1943 Rockwell hydraulic planer has way wipers also and I don't think they got changed very much either. Because you can still see some scoring in the ways. But I'm not going to mess with them because it's not that bad. Still as accurate machine. Now I changed all the ways, the wipers. I took some half inch felt and put in there. You can buy felt pads from uh, uh, McMaster Car. And they come in all different thicknesses and you could cut your own. I mean, when I'm through this bridge port every year, it's going to get new way wipers. They're cheap. H&W has them. Several other places make them. And they'll make your machine last a lot longer. In fact, those accordion way covers will help even more. Especially on a bridge port, you're cutting in, I mean, metal goes everywhere. 
when I pull apart that one, I found chips inside the turret, for Christ's sakes. Let's see if we can get that to come off. It's got some washers here that are embedded into it. Let's pull them off. This thing's just breaking down everywhere. It's got pieces of washer hooked onto them. Come on, Mr. Camera. Well, take my word for it. It's one on either side, so you got to have two of these. Man, that thing's just crumbling. Not good. That's why it's breaking down and leaving those black marks. Oh, I got a new tool for Bob. Let's flick it around here. I was going to make some flanges for a fishing boat for their drains. And it was perfect for doing on Bob. But Bob doesn't have a way to cut a taper or a, or a chamfer on something. So I haven't got it bolted down, but this is an attachment that you can change to an angle. And it'll do about seven eighths of an inch. It'll be perfect for it. Put it over here for safekeeping. Now this is a knurling tool, a crush type knurling tool that I found it on eBay. And I bought this one because it came with a whole bunch of different rollers for different threads. And basically, there's one goes on each side, and then you can adjust them in and get it adjust. You can't do much more than five eighths of an inch. So screws and stuff like that is what it's going to be used for. I need one more thing that I've been searching for. Now, the center of the spindle is a certain height, and I forgot what it is. But Hargen makes a tool as well. It's a cylinder like this that is made for the height between the bed and the tool. And it's got a little top that spins here and you can easily set your tool height on them. These are going to be for that aluminum failure I had. Don went and slotted out the parts so pretty soon we're going to weld them on and then I'll bore them again. Anyway, I'd love to find that tool that measures and lets you set easily the, the height of the tool bit. Anybody knows where one is? Now Bob uses oil for a coolant. You're not supposed to use water-based coolants on Bob. Messes with the spindle bearings. So all of this stuff that looks like rust and all that, that's just oil film. And I haven't ever taken the time to clean it all off because, frankly, it's not going to rust if that oil film's on there. For those of you wondering, Don is doing okay. Don stopped smoking. Well, I don't know. Coming up on two and a half, three months ago now. He's kept at it. He's got a lot more stamina than I do, I guess. He keeps a half 
of a pack of cigarettes sitting on his counter to remind him that he quit. I mean, I, I stopped dipping snuff a long time ago, and when I did, I was digging a post hole. And I got tired of this can of snuff having control over my life. I pulled it out of my pocket. It's buried underneath that concrete in that post hole. I know where it is if I need it. Let's see how this fits. That goes on there. Got a nice snug fit. And it doesn't fit. Damn it. Well, wait a minute. Is it backwards? Ah. It has to fit like this. I just thought that that was the nicer surface. I guess that's where it mounts on the, the, the table when they're printing it. And this lip is up on top. But the bolt holes is a double here, double here, but it's extended. And that's the way it is over here. So it goes like this. It's up there nice and tight. Let's get us a... Anyway, he's doing good. Both of us been so dang busy, we can't do anything else. That's going to work nice. Let me get these things... I'll bring you back. I guess I should tell you why I went to Harbor Freight on the uh, the grinder that I'm getting ready to use this. I need to make a device to hold a diamond tipped dressing tool high onto the side of the 14 inch grinding wheel. Before I balance it, I need to true up the sides, they say. Now, I don't know much about grinding on that level. And there's been some people talking me through it. And so I highly follow their advice. And that's one of the best things you can do is trip the sides before you balance it. And then you balance it, then dress it, final dressing. Well, I was going to Don's today to use his mill to make a holder for a diamond. I didn't want to take time to program it on the CNC and do all that stuff. You know, I could crank it out pretty quick over there. But I wanted to be able to make a nice, hold this block of steel for a 15 degree angle. And for some reason, I don't have a, an angle vise. <coughs> Excuse me. I tried all the other stores that I normally go to. My carbide indexing tool place out here that's a machine supply doesn't have any. Northern tool didn't have any. Bass tool didn't have any. The only place that had one was Harbor Freight. So pardon my little fun with the mask. <laughs> Why don't you want a little start there, screw? There you go. The people who don't watch till the end probably won't get the whole intro. That's okay.
hug these up. Afraid if I make them too tight, they'll deform it. They weren't tight at all in the beginning. And I'm doing them in a line so any stretch will be coming out and I won't buckle it in the middle. How's that, Bob? Feel better? Sure looks better. See everywhere it'd be parked, it left that little discoloration. So now, hey, that's going to work nice. Sometimes eBay does wonders, you know? Finding things. That's all right. Bob's happy. Well, the next video is going to be truing up that wheel. And thank you for sticking around this long. There's not going to be a test anymore. Don would fail. Thank you. Bye.